I'm giving you five website design disasters that I see beginners and even professionals making within their website design career and how you can actually go about fixing them. So I've been designing websites for well over 10 years. And when I first got started, I didn't really understand the principles that I'm gonna share with you today. And therefore the results that I was able to achieve are much lower than they are these days. As a beginner myself, I was putting out designs which I at the time was proud of, but it actually didn't reflect the level of quality that it needed to be in order to be considered a professional website or to even be able to charge thousands of pounds or dollars for it. When you can correctly design a professional, beautiful, functional looking website, that is when you're able to charge a lot more money for it. If you watch this video from end to end and you can see yourself making these mistakes, then I'm gonna show you how you can stop doing it and how to improve your website designs. Now, my first point here is using or relying on terrible tools. Now, there are a ton of website design tools that are available these days, but you just need to make sure that you're using the right ones. Now, typically an artist or a designer is only as good as the tools that he has available. So if you are getting started and you're unsure about tools, there are a few that I do recommend. First of all is Figma. Figma is a great product design, web design, UI, UX design tool that's completely free. On top of that, you've got Adobe XD, which is actually one that I use day in and day out and I very much enjoy using that tool, I think it's fantastic. But if you're not feeling any of those, you can use Sketch. Now Sketch is an app that's only available on Mac, so if you are a Windows user, you're not gonna be able to use that. Also, Adobe XD is a paid for program because it's a part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. And as I said, Figma is completely free. So whatever your preference, any one of those three tools is gonna be really good for you in producing website designs. Okay, so the second disaster here is poor site structure. Now ultimately, websites are built in what's called a box model, okay? They're built in boxes. So you have to start thinking in boxes. So you have your main body, like the, the, the body of your website. And then within there, you have sections. Inside your sections, you have containers. Then inside your containers, you have div blocks. And then inside your div blocks, you have all of your website elements. So things like images, text, buttons, links, videos, whatever it might be, these make up the core parts of your website. Now, no matter what website you visit, everything is gonna be built up onto a box model. So even if you were to go look at some big company websites, you will see that things are built within a box model. So if you look at PayPal, here's an example of a fairly simple box model. Okay, there's not an awful lot going on here. There's not a lot of complexity and things are quite open and spacious. But if we look at Amazon, for example, Amazon is far more complex. We have a lot of boxes and we have boxes inside boxes, okay? But still, if you look at it, you can see that it still represents a box model. So by looking at these two examples, you can start to appreciate how websites are built up on boxes and how you can start visualizing and seeing websites as boxes. Being able to think in boxes and produce designs with boxes in mind, you're not only gonna end up with a better website, but your developer's gonna love you too. Okay, so number three is not having correct hierarchy or spacing within your designs or any of your elements. Okay, so being able to fix this one thing alone completely changed my ability as a web designer. It went from my designs being absolute garbage to them actually looking really nice, clean and professional. And I was able to start upping my prices really quickly because the quality of my work skyrocketed. Okay, so what do we mean by site structure and hierarchy? Okay, well imagine that you've got a ton of elements on your page, whether it is text, titles, images, columns, okay? You need to make sure that everything is nicely spaced out, okay? If your spacing is inconsistent, it's not only gonna not look visually pleasing, but it's also gonna be really difficult for the visitor or user to consume the information that you need them to consume. Okay, so you can start fixing hierarchy by introducing things like larger text for titles, subtitles, having a consistent size for paragraph text, and by simply adding larger text for titles, maybe some weight on some titles, that's gonna create content hierarchy. That means that your title is a higher priority than the content that sits underneath it of a lower size. Okay, and you'll see this in all sorts of website designs. It allows users to come to the website, be shown very quickly the information that is important, and if they want to learn more, they can start then reading down. Okay, so that's hierarchy, but hierarchy alone will not save your website designs. You also need to introduce correct spacing. Okay, I'm talking consistent spacing. Okay, and I see that a lot of people make this mistake. Inconsistent spacing can kill your design twofold. By creating some spacing or padding consistency around all of your website elements it can dramatically improve the design of your website. Adding this consistent pattern is going to mean that your content is segregated in blocks, okay? So when the user is visiting the site, it's going to be really easy for them to scan and find the information that they are looking for very quickly. Again, it's going to stop 
stop them from being overwhelmed with information overload and just not being able to digest what's on the page in front of them. Not only do you want to make sure that your spacing is consistent through your containers, you also want to make sure that the spacing underneath your titles, subheadings, paragraph, buttons, images, make sure that they are all consistent as well. This creates really nice design consistency throughout and again will lead you on the way to being able to produce some very professional looking websites. Okay, so now that you have site hierarchy and spacing in your designs, okay, the fourth thing that I see people getting wrong is bad typography. So typography is a really good opportunity for you to have fun with the design and bring it to life. This is a great way for you to bring a business's brand into the design and add a bit of personality to it as well. Okay, so when it comes to typography, typefaces, fonts, whatever you wanna call them, I do recommend that you use two to three within your designs. If you're a beginner, two is absolutely fine because it allows you to define one for your heading and one for your body content. Or if you do want a third, you can have one for your heading, you can have one for your body content, and then you can have an ascent or some other way to add emphasis on areas of your content. Okay, so once we start mixing in our typography into our nice site structure and hierarchy, you can really start to see and appreciate how your website can be clean, clear, balanced, and professional looking. Okay, so this brings us on to the fifth and final thing that you need to stop doing in your website designs, and that is using crappy colors. Okay, now colors are a very difficult thing to get right as a beginner but you can simplify it okay colors on a website again it really helps pull across the brand's tone of voice branding and the whole look and feel of the website the use of colors really controls the emotion of the website and how an end user can feel about what they are viewing so making sure that you got your colors right is going to really set you up to produce some websites that people like the look of so when you are getting started I do recommend two to three colors for your website we'll have one primary color one neutral color and one accent color. What I recommend is your primary color to be as close to the brand color as possible. Your neutral color is something that is not white or black, but close to it. And your accent color is a conflicting color against the primary color to really help create emphasis in certain areas of the design. For example, using an accent color on a call to action or button if you wanted someone to get in touch. Okay, if you wanted to go a little bit more crazy with colors, you could look at implementing five. As I say, I do recommend two to three, but using three to five colors as well is also fine if they are used correctly. So you could have a primary color, you could have a secondary color, you could have a primary brand color, you could have a secondary brand color, you can have two neutral colors, and then you could have your accent color as well. Okay, and you have to make sure that you're using these colors correctly. You can use primary colors on the likes of headings or even background colors. You can use accent colors on call to actions or areas of text that you're looking to draw more attention to. If you are using more than three colors, you can look to introduce another brand color into the titles. You can also start implementing color into entire sections of the website. But as I say, use color sparingly and practice. Have a look at some examples of websites that exist online and see how they're using colors. The best way to start learning how to do things is look at the greats, look at PayPal, look at Spotify, look at Apple, okay? There's some really nice websites on there. Start to see how they're using colors and you'll really start to appreciate how these colors should be used sparingly and get a good idea of when you can and can't use colors. Okay, so that's five design disasters taken care of. Okay, make sure that you are not doing any of these in your designs and if you are, easily fix it. Okay, practice, take a look at any of the projects or websites that you're currently working on and see if you're making any of these mistakes. And if you start following these rules, not only are your websites gonna look better, you're actually gonna be paid a lot more for them. Okay, so there's more videos appearing on the end screen right now for you to go and check out. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. If you haven't enjoyed it please do give it a thumbs up i'd really appreciate that and if you haven't done so already please subscribe see you in the next video bye